Oh boy, here we go. Hello, friends. Uh, resident anime fag Liddy here. Uh, this video will mostly be discussing what I think are effective methods to uh, the neutral game and just PvP in general in Absolver. Because, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot more intricate than the PvE kind of shit. So let's get into that shit. Keep in mind that this is all like launch day shit. So, uh, there's a chance that as this game goes on, the meta will evolve into something absurd. And then we're gonna have some like For Honor case where the balancing will all be dictated by one certain moveset rather than uh, the character each themselves, etc. So without any further stalling, let's get into it. Uh, first of all, I feel like Absolver is a game that ironically rewards initial aggression, but slowly uh, goes into the favor of the defensive player. The reason I say that revolves almost entirely around the concept of the combat deck. The way the deck works is uh, every player has their own like unique moveset that's dedicated to them and only them unless they open a school. Compare that to a game like uh, Dark Souls, where you can see the weapon that they're holding, so you can identify their moveset before you come in. That gives you an inherent, like, if you have the knowledge behind it, you'll have an inherent advantage against a player who doesn't know your weapon. With the deck system, the first person to get a hit is gonna pretty much be at a neutral advantage because you don't know when to parry because you don't know their moves. You don't know when to dodge or what's a good time to interrupt their hits. You're just gonna sandbag until you realize their patterns. And I cannot stress highly enough, it is until you learn their patterns. A lot of this game's, like, just the gameplay itself isn't about who knows their combos the best. It's about who can predict their opponent's next move the best, really. So we're gonna take a look at an example during this fight right now, boys. So, you can see we're just, like, fucking spacing each other out, boozling. All of a sudden, one, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two. This nigga has the fastest fucking back moves in the world. But when you oversaturate and use that move too much, eventually someone's gonna realize your plan. And they're gonna catch on. What this basically means is mix-ups are gonna play a huge role in how you play, and your mix-up will for the sake of being viable, I guess, although I can't say viable because it's so early in the game, but for them to be useful, it'd be a wise idea for your mix-ups to have different timings than your actual combos. Another thing to do is invest in mix-ups that attack in different directions. Uh, I notice a lot of people do uh, have flow combo decks that go left, right, left, right, left, right, and it is insanely easy for guys who use Forsaken, like me, to parry that and get payoff off of that because it becomes predictable. Your mix-up and your regular combo both come from the same angle. If I fuck up my timing on your combo, I just hit the same directional stick again and I parry your mix-up. But remember, again, this can also be played off with. I don't have footage of it because shadow play sucks, but there was a player who would intentionally feint both mix-ups and then just start a completely different combo. What I like about this game is the variety of options, and if you can condition your opponent to certain aspects, you pretty much control the entire game. Do remember though that that's a double-edged sword. You can also condition yourself to be so used to a certain setup that always works that people are just gonna fucking prank you for it every time. And you're just gonna sit there wondering why your god true combo is just failing you now. So to summarize all that, mind games. They play a huge part in this. I don't think there are any combos that guarantee chain. You can always like try to step dash away, but the distance might not be far enough. Or you could block between, but then you're at a poor position because you're losing stamina. There are a lot of things to consider here and there, and I think mind games are gonna be the best because you're gonna have to manage your stamina while trying to force your opponent to not recover stamina as quickly as possible. But that's all for about mid-game when you've already got your neutral established and it's either your neutral is in favor or your neutral is being fucked. Let's talk about the beginning of the game first. Remember that your goal is to learn your enemy's moveset, and to do that you want to do it in the safest way possible. You want to do things that you know will be safe and won't get you punished for it. So seeing what just happened, let's take a look back at what I just did there. Generic honor bow because I try not to be a dick. And right during my first swing, there. You lay a bait which looks like a massively laggy move. 
and then perform another move that keeps you safe from most counterattacks while also hitting them back for it. I've got another example that we're going to take a look at right now. As you can see, I get fucking cornered because I'm bad and I don't know how to fight stagger, and then I see they gain spacing. So, laggy bait, punish. Remember not to make your punishes random either. That move is a charged attack, meaning if they did hit me, I would super armor tank through it anyway. I find moves with charged attack properties and dodging properties the best to bait out attacks with. And if you can bait out attacks, you can get a general feel of how their deck works, and that will translate to a win. So summarizing that, your goal at the beginning of a game shouldn't be to lay in the most damage. Rather, I feel like your goal should be learning to understand your opponent's options and finding out what you have in your own kit to counterplay that. This isn't like Street Fighter or Smash Brothers. You're gonna see the character they pick and counter picks already exist. That's not how Absolver works. You have your own deck and they have their own deck. And each moveset is left unknown to the enemy. It's up to you to find out what their options are and how you're gonna react and punish accordingly. And personally, I find the best way to do that so far is bait shit out. So let's say you do know their deck now, and now you know what their options are. Now your primary objective is pretty straightforward, using your options to counterplay theirs. And I won't lie to you, this clip right here I thought was really good because it's just really compact with good counterplay options that I've been using that I really do enjoy that I feel are both safe and viable. So without further ado, let's let this clip roll out, then we'll look at it again. You know how this shit goes by now. So taking a look back, you can see him try to bait me out with a long swinging move, and since I know he's going to be on the defensive after being left open, we'll use an option that lowers his stamina. Lowered stamina means less options, and if he overinvests, that leaves him in a really poor defensive situation, like right now. You can see here though, during the lag on my combo, he comes in with a really quick low hit. With a move that fast, you can assume he's gonna use that to punish, so you throw out a bait, and boom! Recognizing the imminent punish, you set up a trade. Free damage. I thought he'd be on the defensive after that, but surprisingly he chose to escape again and use the same option. So you can see him backing up now, and that generally means defensive behavior, so you want to bait something else again. Recognizing the patterns of his punishes and realizing I took tick damage last time, I use a different option, this time jumping over it, and knowing his stamina was still low, investing in an even longer combo. At this point, I'm under the assumption he saw his health was low and just decided to start throwing panic hits. He had low stamina and there really wasn't much reason for him to be hitting as much as he is doing here, but you know, I still took advantage of it. You can see right there I tried to do the same bait again, but it didn't quite work as intended, but you know, what works works. We'll take those. I won't lie to you guys, I'm still kinda new, and honestly, it's just luck to me sometimes. I still try to explore the competitive aspects, but whether I like it or not, sometimes I just get lucky. So to summarize this video, I feel that these are the major points that I want everyone to take from this video. I feel like the game rewards initial aggression, but overaggression results in imminent punishes that can cost you a game. Learning an enemy's moveset before they can have the time to analyze yours is a really great advantage you can pick up early into the game, and I personally make this my priority. After I learn their moveset, what I want to do is start mixing things up to prevent them from learning mine. I feel like these two can be interchangeable, but personally I like to learn theirs first before I start mixing it up so I can condition them into something that I want to punish later. Recognizing what a good mix-up is and you just hitting buttons is really important. If you just do your mix-up as one hit instead of another hit, it's just going to be the same thing. What you want to do is make your mix-ups force a reaction. If they're guarding, you want to break their guard, and if they're dodging, you want to do a sweep. If they're just trying to parry you, just hit them. It's like rock, paper, scissors again, like with most fighting games, but a bit more complex because you define what the move is. Anyway, uh, that's it for my beginner's guide. I have intention to make an advanced guide also that delves into different topics like stamina management and the concept of perfect combos versus a delayed combo. So we'll get into that and see how that shit goes. But bye for now, guys. Also, a uh, friendly reminder, I'm poor. So if I can get annotations working, click here to give me money. Thanks. Uh, you don't have to, though. Also, subscribe and join our Discord, I guess. We're weeaboos. Or, we're just faggots. Uh, bye. Oh shit, wait. Also, subscribe.